Hey guys, it's May May and my cuddle bug. I filmed a video recently where I used the cuddle bug and I asked if you guys would like to see a video all about the cuddle bug and so many of you said yes, so here we go. Today's video is going to be all about this little guy. Now you might be wondering what he is. He is a die cut and embossing machine. Now he's not like the Cricut. I get a lot of questions, which one, Cricut or cuddle bug? They are totally different machines. They do different things and sort of the same thing. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. This one I've had for going on five years now. Um, I love this machine and I'm gonna give you all the information about it. There are lots of machines that do what this one does on the market. So do your research, watch lots of videos and pick the one you really like. So when you've got your cuddle bug, I like to place mine on my work surface, this away from me like this. So I'm sitting here and this guy's going this way because when I open these platforms out, I like for them to be to the side. Now, some people do them to the front. Let me show you. You can also turn this this way and when you open it, have it go like this and you're working in this area. Now, probably if I wasn't filming all the time, it wouldn't matter as much, but because I'm typically filming when I'm using this guy, I tend to turn it like this so you guys can see it in the camera. Now, when you lay these platforms out, there are suction cups on the bottom and it's suction cups to your workspace. Do you see that? It is stuck down and that's a good thing because sometimes you got to put a little leverage in this guy when you're cranking the wheel. Now, let me move that so you can see that wheel really quick and then I'll move it back out of camera. This is the wheel that cranks the plates through the machine. And when you get this, you might think it's not there, but it is. It's tucked down inside and you lift it like this and turn it and now there is the wheel. I love this guy, it works perfect. One thing I love about this um, handle is I can tuck it into the side and it just helps it to be sleek so when I put it on my shelf, I don't have that handle sticking out. Love it. Very small footprint too, let me show you this. It doesn't take up much space. Let's talk size real quick because I bet a lot of people want to know. This guy is less than 12 inches wide or long, okay? And based on my cutting mat, it's about one, two, three, four and a half inches wide. Not very, not very big, takes up very little footprint. When you open these up, it changes things, but I don't typically leave this open. I always close it, but that's about 10 inches, roughly. Now, one thing that you will probably want to know about the cuddle bug when you're doing your research is what size is the opening here that accepts the plates and things like that. A lot of times, the companies nowadays are making them with much bigger openings or much wider platforms. So if you want something bigger or wider, think about that. If you want to be able to use wider dies or bigger dies, that's something to consider. Now this one will go, it's, it's slightly over six inches, like almost six and one sixteenth over six inches. Not a whole lot, but slightly over six inches wide. Then if you're wondering about how deep that little hole is, it's right at an inch. So six inches wide, about an inch deep. If you're gonna be ordering a cuddle bug anytime soon, I'm gonna leave links below, and especially I'm gonna leave you my coupon code for Cricut.com. If you put in the code Maymay made it, you get 15% off and free shipping on your orders. Now that doesn't include the access subscription, but it does include um, items like this, even if they're on, on sale. So that's an awesome deal. Now let's talk about what comes with the cuddle bug. When I bought my cuddle bug, I got with it an A plate, and two B plates, okay? They didn't look anything like this when I bought them. They were nice and clean. Remember, five years old. Now, the thing that is an extra purchase, one thing, is a C plate. The C plate is what we use when we use things like this, metal dies. We'll get to these in a minute. I'll show you how those work. Now, you can see my plates are very well used, and this may bother you if it does. When you purchase your plates, just remember, use one plate for your die cutting and the rest for your embossing, and then whenever you lay them on top of each other, just make sure you're always cutting into the same plate. And I'll explain that in a minute. And then you won't have all of them looking like this, but I just don't, that doesn't bother me, so I just kind of cut willy-nilly. There are some other add-ons for your cuddle bug, and let me show you what those are. These are extender plates. Do you see how big these are compared to the other ones? See how long they are? This is still a B plate and still a C plate, and actually, let me do this, two Bs. 
and two C's and then an A. It's the same thing I just showed you, but these are longer. These are the extender plates. Now, why would you need these? Anytime you're cutting something longer or you have a die that lays out longer, or if you want to cut multiple things at one time, you can do it that way too. You can use these extenders for that. Now, the reason I have the extenders is because I also have the magnetic cutting mat. You don't have to have this mat, and I have seen that there is a shorter version. If I can, anything that I show you today, I will link as much as I can below for you guys. But I got this when it was the longer version, so I went ahead and got the extender plates with it. Now, I did a video on this. I'll link that below because I show you how to use this longer mat without the longer plates. So again, you don't have to have the longer plates to use this, but it is nice. It makes them sturdy. We'll now, these are the two things I use in my Cricut most often. This is a metal die. Sometimes you'll find these that are wafer thin. That tells you that they're really thin dies. Sometimes you just find a metal die like this. They even have these that are in something called steel rule dies. I don't own any of those, so if you want to look those up online, it's I'll put the word here of how they're, how they're said, because I know with my accent it will make sense. But there's also steel rule dies that you can use as well. Now, these are embossing folders. They come in different sizes different shapes, different styles. Oh my goodness, you name it, they're out there. So let's look at this little guy. This is like a little border embossing folder. What an embossing folder is, is it has a positive and a negative side. So it has an, a side that you can feel when you rub over it and then a side that sort of accepts that piece when it comes together. So basically, it can sandwich cardstock or paper between it and it's going to press this design into your paper. That's a border piece. This one is like a folder for the eight for an A2 size card. It's perfect for the front of a card. And then this one is too, but you can see how it's floral. It's really pretty. Still a positive and a negative side, okay? And then this one is a bigger one that can hold bigger card mats and things like that. Bigger pieces in it. Okay, so let's look at how these work. So now let's look at standard embossing with an embossing folder. I have placed my A plate, my B plate, I have my other B plate here, I have a piece of card sock, this is actually a card base, put in between my embossing folder. I want to show you that. You see how it opens up? I've just placed that in between. So I'm going to emboss the entire front of this card base. All right, so I'm going to turn this sideways on those plates I have underneath, the A and the B plate. Then I'm going to take my other B plate and place it on top. And then that is going to be the sandwich. How many times have you heard that word, right, when somebody's talking about embossing? That is the sandwich, A, B, and B. And if you can remember, the strong B in embossing means B plate. If you can think of it like that, it'll help you remember. Then I'm just going to wheel this in. <laughs> just use the little handle and scroll it through. And I'm only sending it through one time. I want you to see this. I have a habit of rolling through it and then back through it, but you don't have to do that. You can just do it one time. And check this out. We open the folder, and now we have this pretty Christmas tree embossed on our card front. Now notice, some of those trees look upside down. Watch this, if I flip it over, some of those trees look the other way. That's the positive negative. So it really doesn't happen a lot like that with a lot of the images, but because of the graphic nature of these, you can kind of see how it does that. But isn't that beautiful? Now the whole front of the card is embossed. That is dry or folder embossing done with your cuddle bug. So one way of doing it. And now that's ready for anything, just a simple sentiment and it's a beautiful card. Now we're gonna get ready to cut something with our cuddle bug. I have got an A plate a C plate. Remember how I told you to remember the strong B sound for embossing? The B plate is for embossing. Here you're going to remember the C for cutting. So that's what your C plate is for. It's easy if you do it like that. So I have placed my A and my C together. Now the piece I'm going to cut, I'm going to wear this little piece out right now. We're going to cut a section out of the middle of this card. I will then lay it down directly on the C plate. Next, I'm going to choose one of the dies. Let me talk to you about a die for a second. This is a metal ring, okay? On one side, it's just smooth and there's nothing there. But on the other side, and I'm going to bring it really close for this, okay? See that little ring right on the inside? And mine's kind of turned dark because I've used this for years and years. That little ring, although it is not sharp to my finger, it is a blade that's going to cut through the cardstock. So I'm going to take that and put that ring facing down to my C plate. Now this is where we need to pause for a second and talk. 
If you always make sure that little blade is always facing your C plate when you put it on, then you're only going to have cut marks in your C plate. And if you save your B plates and make sure they go on top of your sandwich, this will never be scarred up like this. But I just don't care. I just turn them whichever way I want them, and I've run them through forever this way. So that's just the way I do it. So here this is. I've laid that little die cut down. Now I'm taking a B plate. I'm going to put it on top. And then we're just going to run this through. Again, I'm going to run it through one time. I have a habit of running it through like this and then sending it back through. I'm not going to today. I'm just going to do it once to show you. Okay. So A plate, C plate, cardstock, die, B plate. That's how that works. So here's the center that we cut out of that circle. And here's the other part that we cut out. And when I remove the die, you can see there that we now have a circle cut out in our card. So we did that with the cuddle bug. Now the reason people question, should I get the cuddle bug or the cricket, is because they feel like this is the same thing that you can do with your cricket. And it technically is. You can technically cut circles and squares and every shape you can imagine on your cricket, and you don't have to buy dies to do it. Now, I like to have both because sometimes I just want to circle and I don't want to open my Cricut and do open my software to do that. This is, you know, open up and go. I don't need a software and I can have all the dies that I want. It's also an excuse for me to feed my buying craft supplies habit. I know that's just me. Probably just me, right? I doubt it. But anyway, so here is the die and they come in all different shapes and sizes. I showed you the circle and the leaves. That's how a die works. Okay. Now there's one more thing that people do with these metal dies and I'm just going to have to tell you about it because I don't have the equipment to wait to make it work. But here's what they do. They've cut the shape out and then they want to emboss this circle around the shape they did. So much like we embossed here, when they run it through again, it would leave that circle shape around the cutout. Now to do that, you have to have a soft mat that is like a, um, a squishy mat that's built for the machine and I do not have it. I will try to get one and do a video showing you how that works, but I've never found one that works in my cuddle bug for me. But I have only tried like one, maybe two over the lifetime because I really don't I don't stress about being able to emboss that circle around, but you can do that. And when you watch videos and you see people doing that with like their tan mats, sometimes they'll call them their tan mat. That's what they're doing. They're embossing that shape around the circle. So that can be done. I can't show you that today. I'm sorry. I hate to not be able to show you, but I don't have anything to do that with on my machine. Now I want to talk to you about extender plates. So this is my A plate. This is the extender A. You can see that it's longer than the original A that we used. So I put an A plate in. Now I'm going to bring in my magnetic cutting plate. I love this guy. Okay. He fits in. He's long and he is magnetic. Let me show you. If I take that die we used earlier and I drop it, it magnets to the board. You can see there, if I scoot it a little bit like that, you can kind of see that it's stuck to the board. That is awesome. That means you don't have to have tape or washi tape or anything sitting close. You can just use the magnet plate. See that? You can hear it magnet. All right, so why would we use that? Let me show you. So the reason for having the magnetic plate is so you don't have to have tape and you can just put this guy here and he'll stay in place. So let's say I wanted to cut a specific shape. Maybe I wanted to turn this into a snowman cut and I wanted to put this at the top or something like that. I can then magnet this down and then it will hold it in place while I run it through. Now, don't do what I just did. Do not cut directly on your cutting mat. I don't want you to do that because it will leave indentions and it will look bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a link here and I'm also going to put it in the description below. So anytime you hear me say in the description below, that means you need to click the show more button and open that box. I'm going to put a link to my original video where I go in detail of how to use this guy because I think it'll be easier that way and I won't kind of be double talking myself. You'll be able to go see that video and exactly how we use it. So that's the reason I have the extender plates. I don't think you have to have the extender plates if you don't plan on cutting longer things or um, sometimes there's some dies that are really long, like for rosettes, you might want it for that. But I pretty much 99% of the time use my smaller plates. So that is how to use the cuddle bug. I hope that answered your questions. If I missed a question that you had, please be sure to ask it in the comments below. If you have a question, that means somebody else probably has the same question. And by you asking and me being able to answer, everybody can read those comments and get their questions answered.
Now, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you're watching this this week, then it is before Thanksgiving, and I'm excited about spending mine with my family. I am going to take some time off. For sure, my Friday and Saturday video will not be here this week. I'm taking the long weekend off, and I'll be back on Monday next week. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one. Bye-bye.